Hello, Isabella from Pride Hire here, and welcome to the FAQ video. Uh, slightly different than usual, so not showing how to make stuff or what to dress or how to go to the toilet, but trying to answer your questions. Um, you do ask loads and loads of questions in the comments, um, and it's not really a good use of my time to try to answer every single one there. Um, some questions are silly, some are serious, some, some are funny, so I shall sort of interspace the silly with the funny ones. Um, so that it's not too boring for you, hopefully. Um, so yay, FAQ section, here we go. Um, with me there's my interviewer, husband Lucas, so he's going to be asking the questions. So, question one. Question number one. How and when did prior attire start? Um, well, I was not trained as a dressmaker or a seamstress or a pattern cutter. So, um, I studied languages at university, I studied English, read English at the uni. Um, but um, I spent one memorable summer in uh, London with the Past Pleasures Company, do check their website, and fell in love with the interpretation and the recreation of, um, of historical fashions and, and just learning more about history. And from then on I came back home, I joined a historical fencing society, started working with some different weapons and at some point we had a medieval banquet and they needed a dress. So I made my first dress horrible and <laughs> it is cotton velvet but just horrible but it was apparently better than everything else they had so i started getting commissions much to my uh, panic originally <laughs> the the desire to know more and to study more so it was quite a lot of study self-study and just learning on my own mistakes um and there you go 24 25 26 years later now and I have my own business. Um, prior Attire Legally has come into being for about 11, 12 years ago, initially as a part-time business, sort of, um, but now for the last 11 years as a full-time business when I quit my job in the college and I started making stuff for you guys. There you go. Silly question next. Is that your own hair? <laughs> well, all the hair you see in my videos belongs to me. But this is my own hair. <laughs> and even that is sort of fake because I'm naturally blonde. So <laughs> there you go, my own hair. Silly question. <laughs> <laughs> Another popular one. What is your favourite period? Well, the recent one really. Um, mostly because I just can't decide. <laughs> there are so many things that I like about different periods. Um, and I like the variety. So one week I would be up to here in Georgian stuff, planning stays and making stays and pocket hoops and panniers and, and having big hair. But the other one, I quite like the simplicity of Viking wear and then doing some tablet weaving. Um, I think my expertise nowadays mostly run towards the Victorian era because of the book, The Victorian Dressmaker. We are working on the second um, volume of that. But I originally started with, um, with medieval stuff in, inside so I spent about 10 years just doing medieval mostly because that was the most popular period after that there was 17th century another one very popular period and it sort of grew exponentially from there um, don't tend to do a lot um, for earlier than 5th century so not really that much into into Roman stuff or Celtic um, but then after that anything goes really do you wear historical outfits every day of course I'll do. That's a historical outfit from about three years ago. Proper vintage, as you can see. Down to very funny socks and, and slippers. Um, the question is, well, I love my comfort. Um, I do wear what I want to wear, really. Um, I wear normal clothes, usually leggings and then jumpers um, for everyday work. But we do spend a lot, a lot of time in historical outfits when we are working for museums of... of um, historical sites or doing inter uh, in, um, historic interpretation or enacting so really quite a lot of time. On top of that I do tend to um, do quite a lot of history bounding. If you don't know what history bounding is do check Morgan Dunner and her and her and her YouTube channel as well but it's basically utilizing um, vintage or um, flash items inspired by historical fashion in everyday wear so um, yes I, I do that quite a lot mostly because if I have something I like, I would like to wear it, so why not? So I don't really care what other people say. Um, 
So a few examples, my um, sights had the lighting habit. The jacket is a replica of 1895 jacket, the apron is modern. Um, I do wear my skating jackets for normal winter, um, things like that. Um, to wear what you want to wear, really. It's just, you know, enjoy, enjoy it. <laughs> and today you fancied this look? Oh yeah, absolutely. The height of fashion 2015. Love the slippers. <laughs> and next a question you should never ask a lady, or anyone for that matter, how old are you? Um, well, I'm 40. Oh my god, I forgot 45, isn't it? <laughs> in April. For, for 45. I'll be 45 in April. There you go. Um, don't really pay much, much attention to that. It's just year after year, really, and try to make the best use of the time I have here. Another popular question. In all those historical outfits, how on earth do you go to the loo? Well, obviously, you haven't been watching my video channel. <laughs> um, Embarrassingly, one of the most popular videos, I think the most popular video, is how do you go to the loo as a Victorian? Um, so yeah, there's a link. Please watch. Um, generically for women, it's been relatively easy. All the knickers are split. Hold on. There you go. Split knickers. Open wide. Well, when you open them. So basically, you don't have to remove anything at all, you just use a chamber pot or, or your commode or whatever, as normal. Um, another question that actually brings the Mr. Might is um, dealing with the period, how women dealt, dealt with the period all those times, and um, not really much differently to nowadays. Yes, you don't have proper knickers, although you can wear rarities like men did, but most of the time it was a tea bandage and a, and a cloth pad, um, or tampon or, or sponge. Um, or sponge tampons or cloth tampons, um, really depending on what you preferred. And to be honest, much more environmental fr environmentally friendly than, than nowadays. <laughs> so, another question. How long does it really take to get dressed like that? Um, like this, just about a minute. <laughs> Um, but um, seriously, most of the of the items I show on my YouTube videos, um, although the videos are a bit longer because I do take time and, and I'm very careful about stuff, to be honest, five to eight minutes, maybe ten if you have a lot of hair to, to play around with. A little bit longer, obviously, if you're putting elaborate makeup um, for Georgian stuff or very elaborate hair, that goes without saying. But clothes, even without help, it's really not that that much of a problem. It, it really isn't. Yes, you can take your time and really make it into a, a nice um, ceremony and it has a certain, um, certain aspect to it if, if you like to sort of just relish the putting all the petticoats and corsetry and stockings. It's, it's quite sexy actually. <laughs> um, but you can just chuck everything on and, and be ready in five minutes, which we occasionally do when there's a nice light outside and we need a photo shoot. So yeah. Definitely not the two hours to get dressed. Another question. Do you ever wish you were born in a different century? Yes, why not? I would like to live in the ninth century and everybody is dead by the 40s, basically. We have no antibiotics, no rights, and I would have seven children. No. <laughs> Just, um, I'm really, really grateful to have been born now. Um, yes, life is not perfect, it's a bit better for some people and not so much for others, but generally it's much, much better than we had even 100 years ago. I do enjoy um, healthcare, I do enjoy vaccines and ant uh, antibiotics when I need to. Um, I do actually quite, quite a lot of security when that comes to, um, just nowadays with coronavirus, um, the death rate is just really not comparable to bubonic plague, for example. Um, so yes, there's that aspect. Um, I like the freedom. Um, I just ask a woman, obviously, um, yes, it's not so recently that we got our voting rights and rights to hold property and basically do what we want. So I really like living in a century when I have the freedom of being who I want to be 
uh, been able to speak as I think most of the time, if people can take it. <laughs> Um, when I can marry whom I want, when I can love who I want, um, when I can do whatever job I want to, when I can decide whether I want children or I don't want children, when I can hold property, uh, when I, I can vote, it's it's really no no brainer. I, I like living where I am, and obviously I can dress in whatever century I want as well. So, you know, I'm not constricted just to Regency, for example. Um, I can wear Regency one day, Victoria and the other one, then medieval. I can have a Mr. Darcy of my husband one day and King Charles of the second as this, uh, on the other day. So, yeah, <laughs> I like it now. <laughs> so, how many people work for you? Well, it's um, Isabella, who is me, who does all the dressmaking stuff. And there is Isabella, also me, who writes books. And Isabella, who <laughs> also... <laughs> Um, that stints and, and works um, as interpreter and gives talks. So, yeah, lots of us really. There's obviously Lucas who takes care of the photography stuff. <laughs> but yeah, it's a one woman business. It's all me, mostly because I'm a control freak and I don't really want to share. Um, and I find it really difficult to let go. But secondly, um, I'm an introvert, so I really, really like being on my own and my most most productive time is on my own workshop. Mm. Right, part two. Um, welcome to my studio at home and say hello to Merlin, who's keeping me company. I knew you wanted Merlin content. There you go, more questions. So, can you please do a video on insert your favourite a period here? I, I've got loads of requests from you guys um, asking for making a video of whatever favourite style you want. Um, the thing is, yes I can make them, but um, my videos are just a side effect of my job. So I'm using costumes that I have made for myself to work as a historical interpreter, all the stuff we are making for the shop, so they are not... There you go. So if you want something very specific, well, you have to commission it. It takes time to research, to buy all the fabrics and accoutrements, to um, to make the stuff, to book a place, to film it. Absolutely, we can do that, but it will not be free. These ones at the moment are because that's what I do anyway. If you want to watch high quality um, videos on amazing costuming through the centuries, differently books, uh, I do recommend Crow's Eye Costumes, they're professional videographers um, and they make absolutely stunning, stunning work. So yeah, do have a look at these. But mine, that are just something I make by Dubai. How does it feel to wear historical outfits in public? Um, lots of people say that it must be very weird and that we get lots of attention. Actually, it really depends what you're doing and where you are. If you are at an event and everybody's wearing other stuff, even though you are in public, it doesn't really matter. If you are at an event and you're working as a, a historical interpreter, this is your job. And it's your job is to interact with the public, to educate and um, entertain at the same time. And your costume is a part of you. Um, and if we're going just for a walk on Brighton Pier, for example, in our Victorian stuff, to be honest, very few people actually take any in the notice. A few people will sort of say, oh, you look nice, or you look silly, or, you know, commented, but, hey, really, who cares? <laughs> Next question. Aren't you hot in all that? <laughs> That's a very, very popular one. People see the video, see the amount of layers that come in, um, and come on, but... Do, <sighs> We have a very different perspective nowadays. Uh, we wear just a, a few layers, although we do wear quite a lot of layers actually, if you look at that. Um, when we're in Finland, obviously it's cold in winter time, so you wear a couple of thermals and, and a damn jacket and a park or whatever. And the same was true in the past. Um, you wear clothes that, and you wore clothes that were suitable for the season, for the climate you're in, and for the weather. Um, yes, you have you know, padded jackets for winter, do you wear them in the summer? Not unless it's really, really cold. 
Um, same applies in the past. Yes, you have fur-lined jackets and, and, and quilted petticoats. You don't wear them in the summer. You wear the lightest possible fabrics. Yes, there are quite a lot of layers there, but guess what? They are all natural fibre, all breathable fibre. Much, much better dealing with the heat than polyester rayon. If you make yourself a dress out of um, poly taffeta, it's just like a sitting on personal sauna. It would be awful. <laughs> However, silk, linen, cotton, even wool, they're all breathable materials. Actually, wool is better better breathing than breathing than silk. Um, and they keep your cold temperature steady. Yes, you will get warm if it's 30 degrees outside. Guess what? Everybody will, whether you're wearing um, a Tudor dress or if you're wearing shorts. But I will be the one who sweats less because my cold temperature is steady. There's a video on that on my, on my channel as well. It's been a couple of years since I've done it, but it explains the idea pretty well, I hope. So yeah, go and have a look. Another popular question. Do you sell clothes? <laughs> no, I'm a dragon, I hoard them all. Um, obviously I do sell clothes, um, that's my business. Um, just read the credits after the video, <laughs> or on the text underneath the video. Uh, you can see our website, and yes, we do have an online shop, and yes, we do commissions. Bear in mind, we are currently booked about a year in advance, and for most bespoke commissions, you need to come in person. Um, but yeah, yeah, we do sell them. <laughs> That's how I make my living. You must tell us, where do you get those boots, those hats, those bracelets, rings, accoutrements, etc.? Well, I did tell you. <laughs> it's all in the credits. Most of the stuff that you can see in my videos, just if you don't really want to watch the very end, don't just scroll back to the end. There are credits. Well, I credit um, jewellery makers, um, shoemakers, hat makers, music um, and location and photography, obviously. So yeah, it's all there. So please, please check the credits. It takes some time to put them in. You know? How on earth can you make so many things, so many items, so quickly? Um, well, some of them I make fast, some not so fast, but it all boils down to the fact that I'm a professional, that, that's my job. I, that's what pays my bills, that's what pays for the cat food, for example. Um, so I cannot really spend a month on just one dress. It, it would not be a viable way of, of running a business. Um, what really speeds things up is experience. Um, the first bustle cage, for example, it took me about three or four days to make one uh, because I was puzzling out the pattern, I was drafting it, and I was uh, trying to work it, work it up, make a, make a, make a, make a mock-up mock up, um, and then make it. And it takes quite a lot of puzzling up. Um, nowadays I can make one in about an hour or two because it's all on, on, on automatic. So the more you make, the faster you will become on the basic techniques. Um, lots of people try to compare um, domestic sewing and professional sewing. and both are great, I, mean, so I was a hobbyist for, for a long, long time, but if you have the leisure and, and, and the possibility to actually work on a gown or on a corset or whatever you're making, slowly and meticulously and, and just enjoy the process, just do enjoy the process, that there's no hurry. Um, however, as a business, um, I very rarely have the luxury to actually make stuff for myself that I can, that I can relish. I, I do make a few a year because it, it's nice. But I cannot really spend forever on making a, the dress for the client. They, they they need to have the item, otherwise my business would only really run. Um, and yes, sometimes people are who are just starting to sew saying, "Oh, it takes me you know two months to make a course." And well, fair enough. My first course it took about two weeks. But now I make about 50, 60 courses a year, if not more, and all that really helps you speed things up without compromising the quality. So yeah, just practice. You will get faster. You might get better <laughs> if you improve, but just practice. But don't really beat yourself up upon if, if you take a long time. It's, it's not the race. A popular question. How do you breathe in a corset? The same way every woman who was wearing that one for about 500 years back did easily. Um, there were not torture devices, there's a whole video here as well, so please do have a look. Um, if it's well fitted, the corset will not restrict your movement, will not restrict your breathing. You should be able to breathe, dance, sing, operatic as well. Um, modern corsets are a little bit different, 
but they were all support garments. The same question could be then, how do you breathe in a bra? Same thing. <laughs>